In previous lectures, we talked about how neurons and neural networks make computations by taking weighted sum of inputs, adding a bias, and feeding this through an activation function. I showed you examples where I just assumed that neurons were able to learn the correct values of weights and biases that it needed in order to predict the data. In the coming lectures, we're going to talk about learning, which is how neural networks learn the correct values of weights and biases that allow it to best predict the data. The first concept that we need to introduce is that of a cost function. A neural network's cost function is like its north star. It tells the model what the difference is between the output the neural network is currently having and the output that we want the neural network to have. The goal of learning is to minimize this cost function. For supervised learning models, the cost function is some measure of the difference between the model's predicted labels and the actual labels in our training set. For unsupervised learning models, these models are not predicting labels, but instead are predicting probabilistic patterns in our unlabeled data set. So the cost function for unsupervised learning models would be some measure of the difference between the model's current predicted probability distributions for patterns and the actual probability distributions for the patterns in the data set. For reinforcement learning, we have a variant of the cost function, which is the expected reward function. But this is still very similar to the idea of the cost function, except for instead of minimizing costs, now we want to maximize total rewards. There are a variety of ways to mathematically define the cost function, but they all capture the same idea of quantifying the difference between the output our model is currently giving due to the current values of its parameters versus the output we want the model to give, which then corresponds to the parameter values we would want the model to have. A simple formula for the cost function that is appropriate for supervised learning problems is the average of the squared errors over all the training examples. Let's look at an example evaluating this cost function using our problem of predicting our friends bluffing at poker. Let's take the 2D version of our bluffing model where we had both mouth angle and face color as inputs. Let's say that the current state of our model was that it's not very accurate at predicting our labels. Instead, the current weights and bias values were such that these were the predictions that it was outputting. This pattern of zeros and ones shown. But what we want the model to output is this, where all the data points within the red triangle are where our friend is bluffing. So we want the model to be outputting a 1 in response to all the data points in this red triangle. And we want the model to be outputting a 0 for all the other data points, which is where our friend is not bluffing. This is a supervised learning problem. So a cost function that we could use is the average squared error, which is the difference between the predicted label versus the actual label squared averaged across all our training data. We need to take the squared error so that positive and negative errors don't cancel each other out. Let's look at how we calculate errors here for the current state of our model parameters going one data point at a time. So for this data point here, in the bottom right, the model predicts a zero. So the model thinks that our friend is not bluffing. But the actual label from our data set is a one. So the error, which is our model's predicted value minus the data's actual value is negative one. And so the error squared is one. For this next data point, the model predicts a one and the actual data label is also a one. So here the error is zero. The model has predicted the second data point correctly. For our third data point, again, our model predicts a one and our actual label is one. So the model is correct and the error is zero. Now we go to this next data point and here the model predicts a one, but the actual data label was a zero. So the difference between predicted and the actual is equal to one. And so this error squared is also one. 
For the next data point again, the model is again predicting a 1 when the actual label should be 0, so the error squared here again is a 1. And here again, the model predicts 1 when the actual label is 0, and the error squared is 1. Now for this next data point over, we have the model predicting a 0 when the actual label is 0. So here the error squared is 0. So we go on like this and compute the error for all the data we have in our training data set, the difference between our model's predicted label and the actual label squared. The cost now is the average of all of these squared errors averaged over all our training data. Here I show the average as the sum over all data points divided by the number of data points. Learning means that we're finding values for the weights and bias such that the errors tend towards zero and the cost function is minimized. To visualize this, let's see what learning looks like for a single neuron perceptron model that has one-dimensional input. So we're going back to our one-dimensional bluffing example where we only used mouth angle as a predictor. And the model was predicting at which mouth angle was your friend transitioning from telling the truth to bluffing. Let's say the actual pattern in the data was that your friend starts bluffing when their mouth angle was greater than negative 15 degrees. This corresponds to a value of the weight equal to 1 and the bias equal to 15, because it's when the mouth angle is negative 15 degrees that the sum 1 times x plus 15 equals 0, where x is the mouth angle. On the right, is shown a plot of the cost as a function of our model's bias. On the horizontal axis are the numbers corresponding to different values for our model's bias term. And the vertical axis shows how the cost changes as we update the value of our model's bias. Remember, cost is the average squared error between our model's predicted labels and the actual data labels. We'll see that as we change the values of our bias, the predictions of our model will get closer to the actual data. Now let's see how the cost function changes with changes to our model's parameters. In general, of course, we'll be updating both the weights and the bias, but for the sake of illustration here, let's fix the weight value at 1 and just look at learning the value of the bias and seeing how changing the value of the bias changes the cost function for this small data set of six examples. We can see that in this data, for all mouth angles greater than negative 15, your friend is bluffing. Let's go through these calculations. Let's say your initial model starts with the value of the bias equal to negative 5. This means that your model is predicting bluffing for all mouth angles greater than 5, and truth-telling for all mouth angles less than 5. Because in actuality, the angle at which bluffing starts is a mouth angle of negative 15 degrees. You'll be wrong most of the time, because you'll be predicting truth for all mouth angles less than 5 and greater than negative 15 degrees. And your cost will be quite high. Let's see what happens when your model updates its bias value so that now it has a bias equal to zero. This means that your model predicts all mouth angles greater than zero to be bluffs. This is a little closer to the real answer of all mouth angles greater than negative 15. So compared to your previous bias value of five, your model is closer with this new bias value of zero to the actual answer. Your model is making wrong predictions less often and your cost function decreases. Next, let's say your model updates the value of its bias to equal to 5. Now, your model is predicting bluffing for all mouth angles greater than negative 5. So now, there are only two mouth angles out of the six data examples that you have that your model is getting wrong 
and your cost goes down further. You update the value of your bias to 10, and now you're only classifying one of your data examples wrong. The cost goes down even further. When your bias is equal to 15, now you're predicting all the examples correctly because you correctly are predicting that all mouth angles greater than negative 15 are going to be bluffs. You have now minimized the cost. If you overshoot and your model then changes its bias value to 20, this means that your model thinks that bluffing starts when the mouth angle is greater than or equal to negative 20 degrees. And because the actual transition point is at negative 15 degrees, you're going to start making errors again. You're going to start predicting bluffs when your friend is telling the truth, and your cost value will increase. Many times, when you see the visual representation of a cost function as a function of your parameters, you won't see a V-shape, but you'll see a parabolic shape like this. For our single neuron example, we'll have a parabolic cost function if we use the sigmoid activation function instead of the step activation function. The sigmoid acts basically like a smoother version of the step function with less harsh edges. Other than the change in shape, this works the same way. The cost will decrease as the value of your parameters get closer to the real actual values of the parameters that you want in order to predict your data. Notice that here with a parabolic cost function, for a fixed change in the value of the bias, there are different amounts of change to the cost function. As your model's value for the bias gets closer to what the actual value of the bias should be in order to predict the data, the amount of change in cost per change in unit bias decreases. This is what happens for parabolic-shaped cost functions, which is the shape of many cost functions in deep learning. As we get closer to the minimum of the cost, there is a slowdown to how much the cost changes for a fixed change in parameter value. We can see that learning means finding parameter values for our weights and bias so that we can minimize this cost. In our example, cost was the average squared errors, but there can be other mathematical formulations for this cost, but it always describes some form of difference between what's our model is currently outputting and what we want our models to output.